Aloha guys, welcome back to another video with Derek Okahashi on moving to Oahu, moving to Hawaii. Today we're doing Waianae. You might think you know Waianae, you might have read blogs or have an idea of Waianae. We're going to give you a true local's perspective. We're going to tell some stories about my high school rivalry with Waianae. We're going to see some Hawaiian monk seals, dolphin excursions. Show you kind of a, a less known luxury spot on the island as well. Everywhere from the luxury to the opposite, from Makaha, kind of point behind me, all the way to Nanakuli. I'm also gonna show you a place to eat that I've actually never been there, true hidden gem. Probably one of the most beautiful restaurants of its type. I didn't know it was there, I grew up here. A lot of gems, a lot of nuggets hidden in this one. I'm interested in what are your thoughts? You know, what did you think it was? What do you think it is at the end of this video? Tell me how it changed your perspective, confirmed your perspective. Can't wait to show you guys this one, let's go. Ko'olina, the resort, Disney Aulani, Marriott, Four Seasons, all of that is behind us. We're going into the west side. This is where I feel like, okay, I'm entering Waianae. You have the power plant on the right. With that being said, they call this Electric Beach on the left. Coming up right past here is the surf spot we call Tracks. On a small day, everyone's really close together. The reef is sharp and it's very, it's shallow. There's a lot of local kids, local families. Don't be that person who thought that they wanted to go to tracks and learn how to surf and your board takes out somebody's kid or something. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do it at tracks for sure. As you're going into the west side, you'll notice it's just like the ocean is gorgeous. The ocean is beautiful. So now we're entering Nanakuli. One of the things about this area, there's Hawaiian homeland. So I just took a right here into the area where there's Hawaiian homes. A lot of times the people who are buying real estate, they, they'll call us up or they'll call in or what, whatever the case may be. And they're like, oh, I saw a house for 300,000 and not a coolie, you know, it's really close to Ko'olina. Well, a few things about that. Close to Ko'olina doesn't mean Ko'olina. Understand that Hawaiian homelands are a, a specific thing. They are leasehold properties. Leasehold means that you own the house, but you don't own the land. Specifically with Hawaiian homes, leaseholds, they have to be passed down to someone or sold to someone with 50% Hawaiian blood or more. For a shaka, so one of the things I notice and I always notice as I come into this community, you see signs, you know, you see the Hawaiian people in protest or in celebration. So we just saw a graduation sign and Hawaii graduation is very you know, a very big deal. People identify with their high schools, they're proud to graduate high school. Graduation parties are huge. In addition, you see protests. The one thing said, Aole solar farm. So they don't want solar farms in this area. You see it up here on the right here. Nanakuli Ea. Ea is like a Hawaiian, it's a Hawaiian word, like a call to action, if I understand correctly. The Hawaiian people, you know, on this side especially, they've experienced hardship over the years. You know, this land, this island was of Hawaiian people and then as the Westerners came in, missionaries, businessmen, the British, the Americans, military, people have been displaced. Am I saying that the West Side is everyone's native Hawaiian? No, that's, that's not necessarily what I'm saying, but you definitely see people of Hawaiian descent in protest or in celebration with their street signs, with their cars, Hawaiian flags, Hawaiian pride. You're gonna notice that and it's gonna be evident when you enter Oh, a guy who uh, appears to not own a home almost pushed a shopping cart into the street. He had a cigarette pack in his mouth and uh, he's like, sorry, shoot a shaka. Two shakas in the first five minutes in Waianae. Aloha is alive. For our military people who might be transferring out here, there is a military installation out here in the in the cuts. One of my friends who's in the Coast Guard, good friend, I joined with him. When he was in the reserves, he was like, yeah, we're out in Waianae doing something. And I was like, why and I? I didn't know we had Coast Guard in Y and I. He said, yeah, you know, we maybe I shouldn't be talking about it, but there's some secret squirrel stuff out here. Speaking of squirrels, kind of a mongoose just ran across the street. So you see a sign that says no dumping prosecutors will be violated. Another thing is whether the people are from Y and I or not, there's definitely some areas you'll see the couches and rubbish, garbage on the side here. There's definitely areas here that are opportune to just dump your trash and it is a problem here in Hawaii. You see a uh, engine there, four cylinder. This is an unfortunate part of, you know, of any place with, where there's poverty. This is a perfect example of the yin and the yang of Hawaii, right? On the left here, I have a dump truck. What was this, a cement truck? All of these engines on the left, jet ski. But look at those mountains, look at that sky. In the winter, when the whole island gets rain, 
It doesn't take a lot of rain to make these these mountains green. Now they don't stay green all year round because this is a dry, hot side of the island. But it just shows the beauty, the beauty of Hawaii. With the cement truck there, with that in mind, there's a lot of industries. In Pensacola, Florida, my uncle actually owns a, a septic tank and porta potty company. They're on the outskirts of town, right? They need land to keep all their stuff. You see that in Waianae. We're going to turn back on to Farrington Highway. One thing to point out is that why and I, there's one way in, one way out. Today's vlog tour is primarily going to be comprised of on Farrington Highway here, the main highway in and out. That's also the source of the traffic. Worst possible traffic situation on the island would be coming from Makaha, the furthest western tip of the island, going the other direction. Today, you know, it's already past nine in the morning. School's not in season. We're into the summer already. So it's not so much of an issue at this moment, but definitely traffic can be a real issue. I want to really showcase the vast difference in Waianae. People might have an idea of what they think Waianae is. So you've been here to Waianae, known the people, experienced the culture. It's really hard just to, to form an opinion from the reviews, but you know, you do have to. Hope this video helps to give you an even more in-depth understanding if this is some place you're looking at or just some place you're curious about because you're moving here. Most people probably don't even know, know what these things are. But these things are called Quonset huts. Back in World War II times, the military would use Quonset huts. Quonset huts are, are almost like Hawaii's trailer. They don't have mobile homes here, like in Alabama and Florida and places like that. But we do have Quonset huts. So they're basically just this half cylinder, long structure that's made out of tin, like tin roof. Maybe it looks like there's some plywood siding and stuff on the fronts and the backs, but the whole structure over it is made out of tin. So you'll see they start to rust, you know, damage from wind and whatever else and sun. I always call these Kamaboko houses. <laughs> Kamaboko. If I had a Quonset hut, I'd paint that pink and white, make them on hey, Kamaboko. Yes, right. <laughs> Own it. Have you ever seen one in like, Kahalu'u or they might have it like Kahalu'u yeah. or something. You're gonna see it in more country places. At the end of the road from where the Quonset huts are, you see, look at this home. This just screams like uncle's house, you know. You got the two Hawaiian flags. One is the, you'll see that looks a lot like the British flag and the other one is the red, yellow, green flag. What that is, is that's the like Kanaka Maori flag. I don't know the full history or I, I can't remember the full history. There's another house with both flags. Kanaka Maori is like the Hawaiian way to say Hawaiian. That flag is one that is speculated that was what the actual flag looked like before the Westerners came and imposed the more British influenced flag. So that Hawaiian flag had a little logo on it. That was the Get Nuts logo. Get Nuts is a local brand. You know Jordan and Tyler, that's their cousin. Keola. How do you describe get nuts? It means to get crazy, you know, like, yeah, bro, get nuts. Or like, if you were gonna fight someone, like, what, bro, like, get nuts. It's hard to explain, right? Almost like saying, like, let's go, like, let's go. Yeah. Get nuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not the exact same. This band right here, this like really signifies that you're entering Maili. When people say white and I, usually what they're referring to is the coast from Nanakuli to Makaha. It starts with Nanakuli, go more west, Maili. It's okay to just say Maili. Then you're technically in Waianae after that, and then Makaha. We are officially entering the Maili area. That mountain that we just passed is, and this here, this is Maili Point. For the surfers out there, one thing about Maili or Maili Point is, well, for one, it's shallow. You have to know where to paddle out, and it's not a novice, you know, surf break. You have to kind of know the gaps in the reef, the tide, where to go. The other thing is it catches north swell, northwest swell, and south. You live on the west side or Kapolei, and you're gonna come this way. You can surf here in the summer, the winter, all year round. So I'm turning right on Kaukama Road. This is an important road because, especially for real estate and people new to the island, we're looking at buying your home. When you see this modern built home in Waianae, it might be one of these small CPRs, one of these small communities where someone bought the land and built eight homes or 10 homes. But most of the time, it's gonna be the sea country subdivision. This valley, is amazing, it's beautiful. Pro tip on the right, there's the Maili pillbox hike. So a pretty difficult hike going straight up. Now we're entering the, the sea country area. So here is Lokelani, 
you need four bedrooms and you want more of a single family type thing, there are attached like duplex style homes. That area is called Kiki Country and then you open up into this park. There's a swimming pool as a part of this community. Big grass area, playground, basketball courts, and this really like charming general store area. If you don't have to worry about commute or you don't care about commute and you want the most square footage you can possibly get in a modern home, this might be your ticket. You see the pride of Hawaii, the pride of White and I, in terms of the UFC Max Holloway on the poster there in the front. I'm gonna turn in and, and drive around these streets a little bit. So this is Holo Moana. In sea country, you have these little different pockets. So this is the Holo Moana community, this is that. In general, you just you know hear people say, oh yeah, I live in sea country. Dude, I've never been here. you never been here? I wouldn't know this is why not? Or Miley. If I just show you if this, I you wouldn't. Right, here. right, right. You wouldn't think, right? For the people watching, if I just show you this community, you probably think, oh, that's one of those new Eva Beach communities or one of those new Kapolei communities. Well, these are unattached. So is it CPR? Like, yeah, it's all land that was divided into these little lots. This one, attached garage, right? It varies. These are more of the entry level single families here. Now we're entering Makalai. So this street we're on is called Pakeke. You'll see Pakeke a lot if you're looking in this area. This is one of the main streets in here. In those areas that we just passed where everyone shares the parking, all of the addresses are Pakeke. So if you're probably looking in the like five to 600,000, five to 700,000, you see a lot of Pakeke street. And now we're entering more of the, the larger single family homes. This is a perfect example. We have uh, two attached homes. Feels a lot like a single family home, but you're definitely fully attached on one side. There's a flag lot in the back. So someone has a long driveway to get into their house. See how there's like, flat board and then you have these strips of wood they call that a board and batten same on this yellow house on the corner they call that board and battens the other ones are like vinyl siding typical everyone's used to but that board and batten style it kind of gives a hawaii plantation you know vibe with still being modern and and not just a shack if you're coming from georgia someplace like that tennessee you might be used to seeing brick if you're coming from arizona southern california like a stucco house. perfect example which Kenj brought up is you'll see that type of construction in Hoakale. Our second Ever Beach video with street views, we ended up at the Hoakale Country Club. So Hoakale is a community where townhomes probably range maybe still in the 700 all the way to, you know, homes that get into the mid millions and they're building a marina and everything else. And they intentionally force that board and batten style. It's a part of Hawaii architecture. I don't know how to speak like a HGTV <laughs> real estate agent, but I like board and batten and I wouldn't mind it on my own house. Is that Jabong? Is that Kalamanti? Oh, Kalamunga. That's Kalamanti. This house here in Waianae has a little uh, farmer's market in the yard. <laughs> so we're just passing by a house here in sea country there's two fruit trees here so the tall skinny one that's papaya and the one with the big fat fruits on it we'd call it jabong like in hawaii they call it jabong is it any different than a regular grapefruit you speak like, japanese it could be one of those weird borrowed words though that's another thing about hawaii like you might think oh that must be a japanese thing but in the hawaii plantation days or whatever it just got mixed up when i went to california i went to a korean restaurant i went and ordered and they didn't know what i was ordering i was like you guys are korean they're like we're korean i told them well, i'm from hawaii and they're like oh that's that's hawaii korean that's not real korean if you've heard of jabong or you look at this this fruit tree and you go oh that's a whatever grapefruit correct me i don't want to put out false information you can see these attached duplex style homes so if you wanted to enter the market and feel like you're you know more in a single family type home and you're okay with the attached wall but you still have your own yard and stuff these homes might be your ticket oh and look this falling down sign is my broker here maybe i'll fix this sign for him Ow. not perfect but it's better we are coming out of sea country. The Waianae coast, the oceans are deep blue and you have some greens and it is hard to beat for sure. The mountains are dry, but still like this valley where sea country is located is amazing. It's hard to understand Waianae in a blog. Honestly too, it's, it's, it's hard to understand Waianae coming from someone who's not from here. I hope that we do a good job of that today. And if, if for whatever reason we didn't, please, Leave, uh, leave us some comments. This is a place I wanted to stop. This is a, like a canal where the water comes out and usually you have kids jumping off, bodyboarding and stuff, but it looks like they're doing some construction so we can't stop there today. I don't know, lifeguard. So lifeguard, police, thank you. Is that, that's kind of our third chakra. Oh, bad car accident, okay. So lifeguard just happened to be around. If that were the morning, 
and you lived further past here, with this being one way in, one way out, just call your boss, check ways, check Google Maps. You know I'm gonna be late and it's not my fault. We're technically still in Ma'iri, Ma'iri Elementary School's here. We're gonna be coming up on, on Y and I, like the actual Y and I soon. Just to point out, we haven't encountered it here yet. This beach park used to have a ton of homeless encampments. Just tent after tent after tent. I mean, think about it. The weather's 88 today, that's hot, granted, but the weather fluctuates from high 60s to high 80s. In Hawaii, at the beaches, you have public showers, you have running fresh water. You'll tend to see uh, people who are displaced end up at beach parks. I had clients who were, I'll show you the, the area where they ended up buying eventually, but they were looking in this area. The girl, she was a young Navy girl, not familiar with the area, and she saw a home that she liked, and it was in this area. You know, I think this street just gives you a good feel for how some areas could be different than sea country. I just wanted to turn down the street a little bit because it was a, is one that I'm familiar with and it's one where I feel like it really represents some of the differences and you know, what's around. We, we try to do that in our second Ever Beach video and uh, you can't help but to do it in YNI as well. There are two high schools on this coast. There might be another private school or something that I'm not aware of, but in terms of public schools, there are really two main high schools, and that is Waianae and Nanakuli. So towards the beginning, a lot of those homes will be zoned for Nanakuli. For the most part, a lot of the Waianae coast is Waianae. Nanakuli is a smaller school. There is a place here called Kalobam. They have acai bowls, desserts. One thing, in Hawaii, when you see a jeep, any place where there's a lot of tourists or, or people who aren't from there, you can tell when someone's not from the area. And for whatever reason, people just, local people don't buy Jeep or Mustang convertibles or stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cargo bombs and Countryside Cafe, they're not open right now. However, Ken just told me about this place up here that has a good view. On the Waianae Coast, there isn't a hospital, like a big hospital, but there's Waianae Comprehensive Health, which is like hot, like a small hospital-ish type thing. And apparently there's a cafe up here we're gonna check out. This beach is called Green Lanterns. Green Lanterns is a beautiful beach, deep water. The waves get huge huge and it looks pretty makeable right against the rocks in the winter if you're not from here and you see big waves there don't try it out not for beginners if you guys are interested in finding a more beginner style wave there's a couple of spots in fact i'll stop at one for you guys today i will stop at one ka'aha aina cafe i had no idea this was here the people in why and i keep this thing a secret so don't tell anyone keep it a secret can i have how's the pastel is too pastel is too um good she go yeah okay i have that this is the first time I've ever heard of this. Oh, yeah. Wait, where do you guys live? I grew up in Ava, but I live in Milani. Oh. Who knew that YNI Comp, this little hospital, has, I would arguably say, the most beautiful hospital cafe view, at least. I didn't know this was here, but I'm going to bring my wife back here. So this is called Pastere or Patere Stu. Oh my God. In Hawaii, in the plantation days, we had people from the Philippines, Japan, China, Korea, Portugal, probably less known, Puerto Rico. Growing up, you're like, why, why do we have pasteles and ganduli rice? Or if you're a Puerto Rican, you might say arroz con ganduli. So when I went to California, they had, oh, we had, this is arroz con ganduli. I told the Puerto Rican guy, like, yeah, we eat that in Hawaii. He's like, what? Yeah, we have all these different cultures, some local, uh, I believe organic greens. Yeah. This is a perfect example of, of Hawaii. Like, you see the mix of home qualities, house qualities, and street vibes in Y&I. Okay, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> oh, that food was good. I, didn't, I never knew that was there. The view is amazing. I can only imagine once you can sit in the air conditioning, we're even sitting on the balcony. And there's apparently there's a trail back there too. It's more of a trail than a hike from what I understand, but it has like some Hawaiian educational stuff. That's a spot I'm definitely going to be going back to sometime. You see, I get like all smiley and excited about the, the views and I live here, you know? This like, is why we say lucky we live Hawaii. Yeah, so there's a few shopping centers. There's actually one in Nanakuli that we went past. There's like a, a smaller one there. As you get into YNI, there's this shopping center here. You'll notice there's roads right on Farrington Highway. And obviously, as you would imagine, the price of the homes right on the highway are generally, they suffer because of the, the traffic. Once you're into YNI, especially past Maili, the grocery store is Tamura's, Tamura Supermarket. You just hear people say Tamura's. In Hawaii, we do that a lot. Tamura's, Safeways, Targets, add an S on these things, but Tamura's is, is the place 
to get your poke, boiled peanuts, groceries, whatever on this side. I'm going to turn right here on Lua Lua Le Homestead Road. When I was helping this uh, young couple from I, born and raised deep I, they said, oh, you're talking about post office road? Because there's a post office right here. And she's like, oh yeah, we call that post office road. I was like, oh, okay. By Pizza Hut, they said, Pizza Hut road, you turn by Pizza Hut road. In Hawaii, you know, we don't use freeway exit numbers and all that to begin with. And on top of that, I guess in y and they don't even use the street names. Just straight up call it this road and that road. My broker and I partnered on two homes here. And there were the two homes at the top of this little driveway. This was one lot at, one, at some point and someone divided the, the parcels. So they call that CPR. Yeah, so the thing with these little CPRs, and you see this a lot in y and right? Because people bought a parcel of land and then you know divide it into four eight ten twelve fifteen for you that may or may not mean anything if you're buying cash or conventional it doesn't mean a lot there may be a, an association so like on this one there's not an association but everyone has to get together and fix this driveway every 10 years or so so everyone has to chip in so since there's not a budget for that if you know derek down the streets broke and can't contribute money and that's a problem for everyone else, right? So that's something to consider. And if you're using a government loan product, like the VA loan, FHA, then it has to be on their approved list. When you have this big CPR, like the subdivisions in Ocean Point, those things are on their approved list. Or if you have a building, uh, we talked about it in our Hawaii Kai video, that this one building wasn't VA approved yet because they didn't have enough occupancy. What it means for you is our loan officer may have to do some work to get it on the VA approved list. It takes a little bit more skill and a little bit more experience depending on the situation. And sometimes you can't get on the list. So if you're going to be exposing your earnest money, you know, putting 5,000, 10,000 down, you'd like to have a good idea of like, hey, can I get this home VA approved? Can I get this community VA approved? You see some guys over here with a, a trash bag with a fishing net inside? Because otherwise, how are you going to carry a fishing net on a bicycle? And also with a People call it Hawaiian sling or three prong. It's just a, a piece of rubber you stick here and you let go of the spear for spear fishing. So it looks like they're going somewhere to spear fish on their bicycles. And then check out this. If I don't have anyone behind me, I'm going to point at this real quick. Look, Ahu Pua'a Waianai. So all around this, this island, you see things Ahu Pua'a. Ahu Pua'a is like, take a pizza pie. Each slice on the island from mountain to ocean was its own ahupua'a, so it was its own community. It had resources from the hunting in the mountains to a freshwater stream, all the way down to the ocean and fishing. And the Waianae ahupua'a was the biggest because fresh water is hard to come by out here. So in the native Hawaiian days, back in the day, there just wasn't as much fresh water to go around. Resources not abundant. For the true Kanakas and whatever, if I butchered any of that, I'm sorry. And <laughs> that was my understanding from Hawaiian class in high school. I don't know if this is a, a national thing or like a federal thing or a state thing, but you don't own the ocean. So if we're buying 15 million on the ocean or we're buying 500,000 on the ocean, it doesn't exist. But you don't own the ocean and the access to it. What I'm saying is if you own oceanfront property, people can access the beach and walk in front of your house. Now, sometimes people have different feelings about that, but it is what it is. So in the case of Pilao Army Rec Center, or what we call rest camp, even if you can't, you're not military, you can't park there, everyone surfs there. Everyone enjoys the ocean because after all, it's, you know, it's everyone's ocean. Waianae High School on our left, home of the Sea Riders. Waianae actually as a, uh, is known, I think, the most famous media yeah. school on the islands. What we're doing right now, Waianae is very much known for having a great program for that. Oh, you see all the graduation signs? Andrew, congrats, my brother. Brooke graduated, Kavika graduated. People really celebrate, you know, the, the fact that you graduated. My friend's ex-wife from Silicon Valley. She said, yeah, I find it odd that you guys identify with your high school like that. Where I'm from, you know, you might ask what college you went to. Oh, you went to Penn State, you went to Duke. But here, everyone, you know, what high school are you grad? Oh, what year? So right there, where are you from? How old are you? This is Orange Street. The reason why I'm turning here, this is memorable for me. We had a buyer call in and he wanted us to help him buy. He wanted to buy cash, he wanted to surf. He wanted to be on a wall, his dream was to live here. And he found the least expensive home on the island and it was here. Oh, they mixed the Hawaiian flag with the police blue lives matter. You see the Hawaiian flag flown upside down. Um, that's a sign of distress, right? They're looking to be sovereign, give the land back or Hawaiians in distress type of thing. This little white and green home, at the time, it was the least expensive home on the island. Now, 
just a, I mean, imagine we're in the least expensive coast on the island and least expensive home and this person's buying sight unseen, relying on our videos, etc. In the end, they didn't actually buy, but I just wanted to show you a street where at one point during COVID last year, the cheapest home on the island was right here. So you can see trash on the streets over here, car parts again, there's not an association. And so that's the risk, right? You'd have no association. No one can tell you what to do and when to do it. So a good question that, you know, our, our media team behind the camera said is, is within the ethics, is it okay to say homeless? We're not saying that these are bad people. You know, be honest with you guys on the, in YouTube nation there, I had an auntie who lived like in the mountains in a, in a bus that was up on cinder blocks. I've had other family that spent short periods of time homeless in between rentals displaced and then i have uncles who seven figure net worth the averages are the averages right there's mental health issues whatnot it doesn't say anything about the people i we mentioned it in our ever beach video the homeless guy in ever beach like he was like hey brother wrong one the shower doesn't work so he told me oh go use the other shower because i'm wasting my time walking to one and then he made jokes and hey yeah have a good day bro smiling at my kid he was full of aloha one thing about high school uh i was thinking earlier i don't know if this still happens like this but when why and i would come to Campbell or Campbell would go to Waianae and Campbell is the high school in Ever Beach. People are throwing rocks at the school bus for like football games. You remember those uh, the school bus windows where you have to put your two fingers in and push the thing up? Some of them don't work. Kids a little bit older already graduated people and uncles throwing rocks at the buses. Such a rivalry. Sometimes fights at football games and stuff like that. It is what it is. Hey I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying I am you know I'm your local guy who was raised here, went to high school here, and that's my experience. You know, to be honest, in, in high school time, before I boxed, did jiu-jitsu, you know, as a more mature grown man now, I wouldn't go to a football game in Waianae back in those days. How about you? Would, would you have gone to a, a Campbell game at Waianae? Not unless I was with a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier in the video, I said, uh, I mentioned this surf spot, don't go there, don't go there. And as I think about it, the Waianae Coast is comprised of some pretty, you know, high level difficulty, skilled surf spots with sharp, shallow reef. There's a beach over here called uh, Pray for Sex. So you can imagine how it got its name, right? We're way at the end of the road, dark, no street lights. This is where people come and park at night. My auntie too, she said that one of these beaches is just called It's. That's another cool little protected secret zone i am seeing that there's quite a few people just living on the side of the road over here right now maybe displaced from formerly being at the beach parks in y and i in terms of real estate we're kind of beyond that so this is just a little local knowledge hopefully you know i we get a lot of feedback that people are entertained by the videos i'll be interested to know like where we are in this video you know give us the feedback like hey we want to see more mountains cheryl in florida she told me hey can we see more street views so we actually did that shout outs to cheryl our goal is to help and serve and collaborate on your home buying and selling needs we also just want to show you all about hawaii so we're coming up on the end of the road end of farrington highway they call this yokohama bay the island makes a little bay here local people surfers might just call it yokes man it's been a while since i've been all the way out to yokes probably a couple of years oh this is closed why because of covid they never opened this since covid they closed this for covid what they closed this for covid that's disappointing oh, we're not going to get out and walk all the way down but you can see where all these tourists are going this is called yokes there's dips in the road significant dips to allow water to wash through when the waves are huge and at the first dip one time i was grounded in high school i wasn't supposed to be going in the ocean that was my number one thing in the world my parents that's what they would take away from me right and so i wasn't supposed to go in the ocean but we had to come out here to find rocks for hawaiian class we we're gonna carve them and shape them into this round thing called a ulumaika we went searching for rocks and the waves were big and good and i went out in like my jean shorts no fins big and, and yokes is is like sandy's from our hawaii kai video but potentially even stronger depending on the swell long story short my friend matt oh they're the ones from the other video you better give me some good news like fired i'm fired if i don't give you good news so here's my high school friend he was like trying to throw me the bodyboard like and when i came onto the sand when i finally made it and survived he's like bro you stupid you could have died <laughs> yeah i was like you're right i was 
thankful to touch sand again. Point being is I grew up surfing, competing, you know, not at a high level, but even I would almost drown a couple times getting in over my head. So I keep stressing it, but be safe when you guys come out here. I was just teasing Ken here because I was like, how'd you see the seal? And he said, I saw it in my heart. And I said, well, that's your Aumakua. So Aumakua is like your spirit animal, your, your family guardian. So the most common in Hawaii, you hear people say, oh, the shark is my Aumakua. The owl, pu'eo, the, what are the gecko, all kinds of stuff, probably the seal, I'm not sure. We put over here on the Waianae coast, there's dolphin watching here. So you'll see the boats come out and do dolphin watching tours. Don't try to swim out to the dolphins. You're following dolphins. You're not that good of a swimmer, most likely. Uh, but people definitely try to do it. It's intriguing. You can actually see two Hawaiian monk seals on the rocks over there. They're just kind of lounging and, and cruising. Make sure that you don't go close to the monk seals and pet them and touch them and make trouble. People get slandered and torn apart online for doing that stuff. It's a sign of disrespect as far as the Hawaii people are concerned. They're an endangered species. You know, I think that just speaks to the, the culture here, right? Like high level of respect, but also super high level of beauty and enjoyment. Tough day at work. One of the things with this channel is we're always thinking like, are we making it too beautiful? Being too cinematic, too touristy? Because our goal is to help people learn about Hawaii who want to live here and move here. Now, this kind of stuff is probably perfect for you people who are a year out, months out, and just soaking up all the beauty. For the people that, you know, like Kaori, Alex, Cheryl, and Anya, and you people who are gonna be here soon, you're like, yeah, yeah, Derek, it's beautiful. Teach me about real estate, teach me about Hawaii. But uh, I just wanted to give you a little behind the scenes. Colors. I don't know which video has the best drone footage. Are we teaching you enough about the island and about real estate and your home purchase options, your neighborhood options? Do you want us to cut out on all of this beautiful cinematic stuff? I have a feeling the answer is gonna be no, don't cut that out, keep it. But uh, we wanna know what you guys think. Connect with me at DerekOkashi.com. Fill out the, um, shoot, what do you call it? Why am I? Form? The oh. form, yeah, but there's a, yeah, the contact form, the contact form. Just shows you, not like super sales, like. Hi, my name's Derek. How do we buy a house today and make money? Of course we do wanna do that, as long as it's within your goals and your best outcome, your family's best interest. Makaha Valley, you know, you could argue it's one of the most beautiful places on the island. The views of the ocean here in Waianae Makaha. Um, this valley is gorgeous. One thing I would say is driving through Hawaii Kai to get to that mansion, you know, that luxury estate versus driving through this is, to is a different experience. By this point in the video, you understand that. But also like in Hawaii Kai, the luxury real estate there, even, even Kailua, but there's, there's like stores, there's shopping, there are things to access. Back here by Makaha Country Club in the valley by this luxury real estate, it's not the same thing. If you're gonna need to go to Costco to fill up, pack up on supplies, or you want to go to a nice restaurant or something like that, the nicest restaurant nearby is gonna be Roy's. As a team, as a family, that's our spot. Go see Taisei over at Roy's and tell him that we sent you. But uh, if it's important to you that you want beachfront home, over in Makaha, or you want one of these homes in the valley, one of these really grand estates back here. That's the big difference. The proximity to any shopping, any restaurants uh, is totally, totally different than Hawaii Kai. Supposedly Tiger Woods is creating a course in this valley. That is a real estate question that I will get at times. Is like, hey, is Waianae a good appreciation play? because I heard Tiger Woods is making a golf course. For my investment acumen, I think that that's a reach. So if you buy a $500,000 house that has some tax benefits, but also has expenses associated with it, over time, it becomes a $700,000 house. Well, if that amount of time is 20 years, I wouldn't really say that that's a great investment. Maybe you're already here in Hawaii and you're like, Derek, I just want to grow my money and put it to work. I have a couple hundred thousand extra. You know, I want to create passive income. I want to you know, do X, Y, and Z. Depending on your goals, Hawaii might not be the best place to invest. I'm actually buying on the mainland right now. So Hawaii was the best place for me to, in, to invest on my primary residence. For a secondary home, probably going to a different state. Yeah, we can talk more about that in another video. So we stopped at uh, Rest Camp in Waianae. Where's the actual name? It's actually, is it over here too? Oh no, it's on the other side. We're going to do our Hawaiian word for the video. So what is this word here? Ooh, a lot of vowels. A lot of vowels, a lot of vowels. So that's Pili La'au. So Pili La'au Army Recreation Center. That's what this place is actually called, but 
Local people just call it rest camp. Probably the best place on the west side to learn how to surf. Over here, when there's actually waves, it's gentle and you know, you can actually learn how to surf. The reef isn't super sharp. It's more kind of rocky than reefy mixed with sand. Super good place for the kids to come and swim. To park in here like we did, you have to actually have your military ID. But if we pan to that side. Oh, Honu. Honu, where, where, where? Oh yeah. So there's a Honu or a turtle, two of them. In each video, we seem to have like a serendipitous run-in with some friends. So I'll count that one and the monk seals is our serendipitous run-ins with friends. Panning over to this side, if you're not military and you can't get on to rest camp, then you can go to Pokai Bay. Pokai Bay is another great place just to learn how to swim. Now there's no waves. The way that it's uh, pocketed over there, if you want to try to surf, you have to paddle over here or walk up the beach over here. But if you want to stand up paddleboard, canoe, things like that, Pokai Bay is one of the best places on the island for that because it's calm and I mean, I hope that the video does it just, I know the drone shots will, but with these polarized lenses on, it's so green and blue and, and amazing. If you're able to swing it, so if you're PCSing in the military, uh, you're going to Air Station Barber's Point. So Y and I is a strong consideration for a lot of people going to Air Station Barber's Point and the Coast Guard because their commute's not as bad. They don't have to go all the way to Hickam or Fort Shafter or something like that. Part of your TLA time and your house hunting time, if you can get one of these cabins, they used to be like 90 or 100, $110 a night. So if you're able to get that uh, for part of your time or once you're living here, if you're able to rent those, these are probably my favorite military cabins on the island. I have to hit that up. It's been a while. On the right here, we're leaving Y and I, Miley Point, that Miley surf spot I was talking about. On the left over here, a brush fire. And that's a notable mention for Y and I. This being that dry desert side, brush fires are a common thing over here. And it causes traffic. So who knows what happened? Did a hiker just launch a cigarette butt off the top. Did a driver right here just throw a cigarette butt and it spread. If we are looking for a home for you to purchase or a place to live, keep in mind, you know, where, what's the brush fire hazard? Now I'm not the brush fire specialist, but it's something that we could look at together. Or you could get an expert opinion on. In a place like Sea Country, you're in the middle of this subdivision, maybe way less likely that you encounter that type of stuff. But you're in these plantation homes right on the ridge with this beautiful ocean view that might be some of the risk you take. I'm not happy there's a brush fire, but at least you're able to see some of this YNI traffic. So it's almost 2 p.m. coming back into YNI. Nah, in the summer, like this, normally there wouldn't be traffic this bad yet. This wouldn't happen without the brush fire, but this is more like what traffic would normally look 4 p.m., 5 p.m. in YNI for sure. Uh, and probably worse when school's in session and it non-pandemic time. Guys, so we're over here at Zablan Beach Park. We just saw dolphins jumping, just spinning like a spinner dolphin. So Ken just trying to catch them again. Okay guys, that was Y and I, the full tour. Did we show you everything? Did we show you more that you're reading in the blog? You know, whatever you assumed about Y and I, is it true? We're not big on house tours on this channel. I think by going around the streets, we give you the overall vibe. If at the least, if you're enjoying the videos, at least hit the like button. Let us know that you're out there. Keep incentivizing us and motivating us to do more of these videos. Make sure that you subscribe, check out our other videos. I look forward to helping some of you guys buy homes. Go to the website, fill out the contact form. I really, really enjoy connecting with you guys. We actually just got a call today from Demetrius while we were on, you know, shooting some drone footage and we should talk to Demetrius while we're doing today's YouTube video. We're gonna do some more talking head videos. So I'm gonna show you my bills, my own cost of living. Just do more information about Hawaii, but we don't wanna stop doing these neighborhoods. So let me know what neighborhood you wanna see next. Let me know everything that you guys wanna see. And I ripped this off during the outro. So let me know what you guys wanna see. I'm obviously losing it. It's hot out here. I'm gonna go get wet. Check out this ocean with me. Let's go for a swim when you guys come to the island and after we buy your house. Shoots.